And that, YouTubers, is what brewing worm tea looks like. Let's run you through the process. Firstly, an introduction. My name is David. I am living in Cape Town, South Africa. This is my back garden. This over here is my harvester that I use to filter the vermicompost that comes out of these two bins. So, vermiculture by Robin's Nest and the product that we're talking about is worm tea, not leachate, which is what leaches out of the bottom of your um, worm farm, especially when your worm farm is very new and you're putting in a lot of green material and food items that are breaking down and as they break down they leach the liquid and that liquid is not particularly good. Now what I'm making here is going to be a natural pesticide. I've got some uh, Cape Gooseberry which are requiring some, some assistance. They are I've got aphids on them and I need to make myself a foliage spray to spray underneath. Now obviously this is also going to be used for uh, a soil drench in those areas that are requiring some nutrients and some boost. Um, but let me show you how to make it and uh, then you can get a good idea of what it can be used for. Now you take 20 liters of good water and I say good water because you need to have spring water or rain water or river water, uh, other good waters. So if you don't have access to good water you're going to need to let your municipal water that comes out of your tap water, um, you're going to need to let it stand for about 12 to 24 hours, depending on the area that you're in, to allow the chemical additives that are put into it to evaporate. Usually it's fluorine, chlorine, fluorine mostly, that needs to evaporate so you can use good water. Then you take, so you've got 20 liters, you then take yourself one liter, I'm going to move across, you can take yourself a one liter bucket, um, that's one liter and I have got vermi cast inside here or had inside here. I put it into a, a homemade tea bag. And the reason I do that is because I don't want to clog up the spray nozzle, nozzle for this. So if I put it inside this little bag and then I turn on my fish tank air bubbler, it's going to allow the process to brew but not give me so many big pieces that are going to clog up my nozzle. Now I've added to my one liter, I've added some molasses with no added sulfites. Uh, if you don't have molasses you can also use honey, also a very good option. So honey or molasses, what it does is it boosts your microorganism content incredibly quickly. It gives them food for them to eat off and what you'll have after about 12 hours, 24 hours, is a is a little weak tea color. This has only been going for about 15 minutes, and you can see there's some color in there, but most of that color actually comes from the dissolving of the molasses in the warm water. So, yeah, that's my situation. I am doing this video for you because hundreds of people have been asking me please show us worm tea so my garden uh, stuff that I've got coming up in my garden there's a broccoli and a cabbage and beans and some pretty flowers and some more pretty flowers and I might edit some of this out because it's just showing it to you okay well so anyway I'm loving spring and this is uh, David signing off and saying please don't forget to subscribe and like. I don't do many videos but when I do, if you subscribe you will get notification that um, I've done a new one. Next one on the cards, not quite sure what it's going to be. Maybe another experiment in the worm farm with unusual products. That one worked really well. Thanks.